Art is a universal language, and through it, each nation makes its own unique contribution to the culture of mankind. Dwight D. Eisenhower Hello YouTube, it is Katie and welcome to another video. Today, we are going to be discussing a freelance job that I did. A bit of a spoiler alert here. At the end of the job, my final result was this artwork right here. I am going to be showing you guys the steps that I took to get there, both within my own artistic method and within the methods of the company that I was working with. I was working with an Atlanta-based creative company called Elevation. You can find them at thisiselevation.com. They use animation, motion graphics, live action campaigns, and more to create company branding, special advertisement campaigns, and anything else the company might need from them. Elevation has worked with Netflix, CNN, Disney, and lots of other household name companies that you might have heard of. Aside from working with these companies, Elevation has its Designed with Love campaign, which is what I was brought on to. Although I originally heard about Elevation through animation school and ended up making Elevation hear about me through applying to be a motion graphics artist, the position wasn't open right now due to COVID complications and them pausing their hiring, but they were still interested in working with me on this project. Let me give you a little bit more information. Elevation believes that to experience one's art is to see the world through their eyes and to experience empathy. That's why it's so important to amplify underrepresented voices and to promote diversity in arts. That's the company's goal with the Designed with Love campaign. The ongoing passion project collaborates with artists like me, to create designs that end up being made into t-shirts. The proceeds from these t-shirts are contributed to the Endowed Scholarship for Black Students at SCAD. You can follow Designed with Love Project on Instagram for more information. I will also be leaving a link in the description box below where you can buy these t-shirts. Again, the proceeds do go to a scholarship helping black students, so why not? It's for a good cause. When I was invited to join the project, I knew that I needed to come up with a design for my t-shirt design. <laughs> I needed to come up with a concept for my t-shirt design that would really amplify this idea of love and bringing love into people's lives and homes. I thought of it in the sense of COVID and that everybody's been away from their families, away from their friends, haven't been able to travel much. All kinds of restrictions keeping people from those that they love, and it's caused a lot of trouble for a lot of different people, myself included. I also thought of it in the terms of just for Black students, and me myself being a Black student, the connection that I feel to the arts. And as I was thinking about the concept of love as it relates to this project, I of course looked at the designs that already exist to find some examples of some great things that other artists have done. I noticed that each artist seemed to be tackling the concept of love in a different way. For example, there was one that featured romantic love. It was a sort of mosaic of two people hugging. There was also one that featured self-love, which showed a girl hugging herself. Uh, there was one that featured like a communal sort of love, and it was people lifting each other up. And there was one that was even typography, and it was love in the literal sense of the word, and what the word can make us feel as represented by just letters. As with any and everything, different artists are going to have different takes. So when looking at my work, um, you can really see where my voice shines through and where my preferences also shine through. You know, I'm not going to do a typography piece nine times out of ten, because it's not really what I prefer to do. That's not my main shtick. My main shtick is watercolor, and that's what I ended up doing here. And don't be afraid to incorporate some of your own desires into your pieces if you find yourself freelancing or co doing commission work or contract work or anything of the sort for artists or companies or people. They chose you because they like you, so don't be afraid to put yourself into it. So then came the question of what do I have to put in to this project? Since romantic love was taken, and that's not really the route I wanted to go down anyways, I tried to think of other forms of human-to-human -human love, and I came up with both friendship and a familial love. The two, I feel, are kind of related, and you feel them in similar ways from person to person. It's often correlates. So uh, I started coming up with some sketches for familial love. I previously did these two paintings, which the company really liked, and they wanted me to think about um, this design in the style of one of these two paintings. I sort of started to play with the idea of using this style from Make Your Mark, the one with the globe, 
And I did a little bit, but I felt like the watercolor one just worked a lot better because I think of love as light and airy and simple. <laughs> simple but complicated. And I feel like that's what watercolor is. It's lighter. It's easier to have lighter paints. It's naturally airy. I mean, it's not airy, it's watery, but they're kind of a similar concept, air and water. <laughs> and then the simplicity yet complexity of it comes from, you know, just putting a drop of red in a little pool of water. Yeah, it's just red, but it swirls around and you can layer watercolor a lot and get interesting colors through not doing much. I felt like watercolor was more of a love media, if that makes sense. You're going to see now the speed paint of me working on my sketches. And I'm going to explain to you kind of what I was thinking for each one and what the company and I ended up going with. So I didn't want to do anything too cliche and just a very clear representation of love. The only one that I felt really did that in the t-shirt designs was the hug, but it was shook up and being in the style of a mosaic and expressing that artist's specific voice. I didn't want to do anything cliche like a hug or a kiss or anything like that because I didn't feel like my style would shake it up so much that it wouldn't just be too typical. So I went instead into familial love, trying to figure out what is a way to represent a family loving each other that isn't just them like smiling next to each other. And I came up with just the simple concept of a baby or a toddler more so holding the finger of a larger, older person. Children are like automatically a symbol of love when featured with their parents. You kind of have to go out of your way to make that not be the case. So just showing the adult's willingness to, you know, slow down and wait for the kid to walk up fast enough with them, the skin to skin connection, which can, you know, add dopamine and adrenaline to people's emotional status. Just figurative things like that that come with the imagery of an older adult holding a child's hand in such a way that they're adapting to the child's needs that I felt represented love a lot. And I knew with all of them that I wanted to do a watercolor overlay black background, bleh, black round, <laughs> a watercolor overlay background and have some miscellaneous shapes in the background like I do in my Angola painting that is for sale on my Etsy KG Creative and also that the company enjoyed. You can check the link in the description for my Etsy. Once I had that, I was reminded of the story in Chinese mythology, which features people having red threads tied to their pinky fingers and tied to someone else's pinky finger is the other end of the same red thread. So they're kind of bound by fate to meet one day and interconnect with each other. Thinking of that, and knowing that I wasn't taking this from a romantic love perspective, and also knowing that not everyone only has one person that they're romantically in love with, you know, <laughs> thinking of that concept, I decided to play with it and bring it into a familial or a friendship sort of setting in that one person can have multiple strands of red rope, rope? <laughs> of red thread coming off their fingers and their hands and it can lead to multiple different people and I wanted it to all of the interconnected like crossing strings to sort of form a heart in the middle because just like fingers with threads isn't the clearest representation of love so I felt like I needed a more obvious symbol such as a heart. Continuing on with this red thread of fate idea, the next one was just a woman with the threads coming directly out of her heart. It was sort of like um, her heartstrings were going out to all of the people in the world that she knew. I ended up leaving the woman sort of monochromatic and making the heart and the strands a bright, bold red to call attention to that. And then for the final design, I did a woman and a newborn baby. Woman's in the fetal position, sort of like the baby was, you know. A second ago and the strands are coming off of her to show her ties not only to her child but to her whole network of people in her family um just letting you guys know a little warning the audio corrupted at this point so when we go back to the video of me i'm gonna sound just a little bit different because it's a different audio device but ultimately it's fine anyways you can see here i'm adding the final color to sort of show the full idea of what i was thinking for everything and um, when we get back to me, I will let you guys know which design I picked, but leave a comment down below right now, which one do you think Elevation and I ended up working with? Hint, hint, it's already been spoiled in this video for you. <laughs> okay, it's about to go back.
the elevation and I ended up going with the hands piece. We thought it was the most dynamic, the most interesting, and the clearest representation of the idea of the threads of fate. Alongside that, Elevation kind of pointed out to me that the hands are sort of in the shape, kind of maybe a little bit, of love in sign language. I personally believe, as I stated at the beginning of this video, that art is the universal language, or as I like to say, art knows no language. Typically, you don't have to speak a specific language to take in an artwork. So I like the idea of using sign language, because I don't speak sign language but I can still communicate with people that do. And even if you do speak sign language, you have to speak English to speak sign language, so there's some interdimensionality with that. And finally, if you don't speak sign language or English, you can still understand the concept of this piece because of the symbolism of the red colors, the light hues, and of course, the big heart in the background. It's gonna be kind of hard to miss that we're talking about love with this one. <sighs> Sorry, I just like, I get cramps in my chest. My body is constantly falling apart. And that's what that was, like, girl. <laughs> my heart. Keep it together, babe. Oh my god. <laughs> working with Elevation was a bit different than working with my typical client. Uh, the typical person I'm doing a commission or freelance job for isn't an artist, and that's why they hire me. So I kind of get a bit of a blurb in the beginning of what they want and what they're thinking, but people don't fully know what they want. And they don't fully care. As long as it looks nice in the end, that's all they need. There's not a lot of specifics that they have to worry about. Whereas when you're working with a company, there are going to be those specifics. So my work went back and forth between me and my contact at the company. She was great, really nice, loved working with her. I really enjoyed working with her. She was the one that told me that the team was thinking uh, that I should try and have my hands be a little more in the shape of sign language. And she was the one who, and she, she just approved a lot of my designs. I didn't end up having any issues with her, but it was always nice to know that they liked what I was doing as I was doing it, and that I wasn't just throwing darts aimlessly at the sky and hoping that they hit something. It was nice to have someone to check in with. Once everything was agreed on, I started actually painting the final painting. And I'm gonna show you guys the speed paint of that, like the super, super, super speed paint. But I think I'm also going to release a separate speed paint only video where you're gonna get a bit of a different perspective on this piece. I transferred my digital file into a traditional sketch. I then decided what size I wanted the canvas. I cut that size out. I moved my canvas into the window so that I could trace my sketch using the window as a light box of sorts. I did my sketching super light and super simple, and then I got into painting. As I was painting, I found it was really easy to layer colors and create nice hands. I knew I wanted two of them to be kind of more red themed and two of them to be more purple. On the red ones I used yellow highlights and all of my highlights come from the top left. But on the red ones, or top right actually. Anyways, on the red ones I used yellow highlights and I thought it looked really nice. So it was kind of like a light glow of God or something. And I found that the uh, faded background which you see me doing here looked just really nice and aesthetic and fluffy and lovely, if you will. Uh, when I was doing my sketching, one of the difficult things that came to uh, play was that the L shape and the V shape in sign language are really similar, and then the O shape and the E shape of sign language are really similar. So if I put the letters in order L, O, V, E straight across the paper, it added variety. But since I wanted two on one side and two on another side, there was no way to do it without the two, like, bunched up hand shapes, the O and the E being together, and without the two open hands, the L and the V being together. So um, I just kind of struggled with creating balance, but overall in the end, it ended up looking really nice. It didn't feel off balance or off kilter, and I felt like it was all cohesive and together. When doing the hands, I made the wrists slash arm area kind of sheer so that the hands would fade into each other and you couldn't really tell where one ended and the next one started. And I just thought that it added to the interconnectivity of them all. And then when I was doing the Threads of Fate, I started out with the heart shape, just creating the line so that it would form a heart and I could kind of see what that was going to look like and if it was going to come out correctly at all. And then once I had that done, I moved in and did the individual threads that were tied to the hands and were connecting the hands to each other, to the uh, network heart of love, to other people outside the campus, etc, etc. 
Um, there will most likely, not entirely sure, but most likely be a slower speed paint of this coming out where I'll be talking about something completely different, but it'll just be a way for you to see more in detail what I'm doing. So if you're interested in that, press that subscribe button so you can be notified when that video comes out. I am almost done painting, and when I am done, I will come back and talk about the things that I did um, once I was done with this speed painting. And then off camera, I touched this up, added a little bit more of a deeper... Um, shadow around the heart to make it even more obvious and then I added my miscellaneous shapes which for this one was triangles. I did red and blue triangles and when they overlap they make purple which was kind of the whole color scheme of the piece. Once again it looks like this when completely done. And here's my like real life one as well. She was really cute and really fun to work on. I really love watercolor painting, so just getting to sit down and paint was really nice. Also hands. Hands tend to be hard to draw, so the fact that these hands didn't have to be attached to a body. And that was a real moment. Only artists are going to understand that one. Because girl, <laughs> this could have been a lot worse of an experience for me. It's important when working with a company that is going to ask for it to be able to provide an artist statement or sort of explanation of what your work means. You know what it means because you made it and you thought about it as you were making it. And it can sometimes be hard to put that on words. My tip is to just start typing or writing. Just start writing. Whatever words come out is whatever words come out. And then once you've written your thoughts, read them over and see if you can't come up with a more cohesive way to put them together to have it all make sense and flow together. I'll share with you guys what I ended up writing for mine. While my blurb is opening up, she takes a second to load. Do you guys notice this little canvas I made? She is adorable. I'm so happy about her. And she's advertising my Etsy, KG Creative. You can buy absolutely gorgeous art prints. Unfortunately, you cannot buy the one that I just did for the company. It belongs to them now. You can get it in a t-shirt form, of course, for this 4D fundraiser. And I'm a Chels. But you can buy art prints from me on KG Creative. And I will have apparel coming up soon. Not like super soon, but I'm working on it. And when it launches, you guys will know. But if you want to be the first to know, follow KG Creative on Instagram or on our new Facebook page. Links will be in the description. They always are, baby girl. They always are. All right. Looks like my blurb has opened up, so I'll read it for you now. There is a story in Chinese mythology which describes the red thread of fate, an invisible string tied around the fingers of two people who are destined to be each other's true loves. Inspired by this beautiful concept, I sought to express that love, be it romantic, familial, friendly, or even self-oriented, is all about the connections we build with one another. Soul Ties features the hands of four people whose stories align, and all the red threads of fate coming off them that will continue to appear and join to different people as their lives go on. These threads crisscross, loop, and tie together to create the network of love and interconnectivity that bonds us all. I seek to communicate visually. I really enjoyed working with Elevation on this project, and I really enjoyed getting to do another watercolor piece in this style. If you like this style, there are three pieces of the style available for sale on my Etsy, etsy.com slash shop slash kgcreative. And one piece of the style available on thisiselevation.com. If you go to their about page and scroll right on down to the bottom, you can find the whole collection. I hope you all enjoyed watching. I hope you got a kick out of seeing my artistic process and what it can kind of be like to work with a company on a freelance slash commission piece. If you have any questions for me, feel free to leave them down in the comments. I do respond, and once again, make sure you check the description because it will be loaded with useful links for you guys. Thank you again for watching, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. I'm going to move to the side so you can click some of my links, and I will see you guys next time. Until then, toodaloo. I guess I'll just move like halfway out of frame, girl, because the microphone is taking us some space. Also, how do we like this filming? You know, you, you can see the mic instead of me being by the window and you just see like my whole room. I kind of like this because I can record two different audios. So if one messes up, we always got the other. And the lighting doesn't always change like it does sometimes when I'm sitting by the window. It's pretty consistent because, you know, 
ain't no sunlight. Let me know. <laughs> oh, thank you guys for watching. And also, lots of views in recent videos. I got like over 300 views on my last video. Thanks. I hope you guys are enjoying what I'm putting out. All right. You should have clicked some links by now. If you haven't, I'll give you one more chance. One more chance.